Under the provisions of Standing Order No. 1A, I am now required to ascertain whether Sir Lindsay Hoyle is willing to be chosen as Speaker, and I call Sir Lindsay Hoyle. Firstly, I'd like to thank my constituents of Chorley for returning me to this House and allowing me to put myself forward again as Speaker. It is an honour to serve the people of Chorley, as I have done steadfastly for the last 44 years as a councillor and a local, on that local authority, then the Member of Parliament for the last 27 years. I would also like to thank my wife Catherine and daughter Emma and the staff in Chorley in that constituency office for all their support. Of course, for me, it was the first time in my political career campaigning without hearing the wise words of my late father Doug, giving me his opinions on how to campaign. <laughs> was going. <laughs> he was always going to give me that. Whatever the polls were doing, whatever needed to be said, I can still hear him now saying, don't stop now, you have to keep going. Well, I've got to say, Doug, after 25,000 steps a day during the campaign, I certainly did do that. I want to say a warm welcome to all the new members of the House. May I also welcome Sir Edward Lee to his new role as far of the House, and to Diane Abbott in her place as Mother of the House. Sir Edward, you have served this place and your constituents for 41 years. Diane, you have served for 37 years and broken many glass ceilings along the way. Thank you to the former father of the House, Sir Peter Bottomley, and of course to the mother of the House, Baroness Harriet Harman. And can I thank them for the support that they gave me during the speakership. Sir Edward, I know you're a man that respects traditions. Indeed, when you ran for Speaker in 2019, you were keen to bring back the use of the wig for the Speaker. (laughs) Hopefully, though, you'll look kindly on me and agree I still have a decent enough head of her. (laughs) Although not quite as luscious as the former member for Litchfield. (laughs) You know, I'm only joking, Mike. (laughs) I was thinking just the other day, you must be the only person that went to bed last Thursday evening as a father of six children and woke up the father of 649. (laughs) On a serious note, it's been an absolute privilege to serve this House as the 158th Speaker. I've got to say that four and a half years have flown. With the authority of the Chair comes great responsibility which is something I've never taken lightly or for granted. I know from experience that decisions have consequences, but with experience comes wisdom, and if re-elected, I will be guided by that as I continue to be fair, impartial and independent. To say I have had the most unusual speakership in the last Parliament is an understatement. From ensuring that the House could function during the COVID pandemic, and to new members, they might want to Google the re-smog conga, <laughs> to adapting technology developed during COVID to allow President Zelensky to be the first world leader to broadcast to MPs in this chamber. It was, of course, an honour to represent this House at the lying in state of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, to present the address to the new King in Westminster Hall, to attend his coronation. Needless to say, in this role you need staying power. I have already been Speaker during the tenure of three Prime Ministers, two monarchs (laughs) and one Jim Shannon. There has never been a dull moment, but it is an incredible job which I want to continue. There is so much more still to do. Because I care about the reputation and the standards of this House, 
I care about enabling the government to do its job in this chamber and for the opposition to hold the government to account. I care about supporting back ventures to pursue issues which are important to their constituencies. And as a back bench member for many years, I know how important that is. And I care about you individually, both as members who have a job to do in this building, as people trying to do those jobs with constituents, staff and families to consider. I have worked tirelessly and will continue to do so to keep members safe, which is the fundamental part of protecting democracy. On that basis, I submit myself to the House as your Speaker, seeking to be your champion. Yeah. I call the Honourable Member for Lancaster and Wire to move the motion. Thank you, Sir Edward. I beg to move that Sir Lindsay Hoyle do take the chair of the House of Commons. The best thing, as far as I'm concerned, about having Lindsay as Speaker is how good it is to have someone in the chair who doesn't have an accent. <laughs> lots of my constituents over the past six weeks and they agree with me too. <laughs> so I figured it out, Lindsay, is that we're not the ones with the accents, it's everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, Lindsay is a great champion uh, for Lancashire, just as he is for this House of Commons. And none of us in Lancashire could have imagined that Nancy Pelosi would walk those famous cobbles <laughs> of Coronation Street. But Lindsay, you did it. Because it seems there's no part of Lancashire's cultural reputation that is out of bounds for Lindsay when hosting international speakers. Indeed, having a pint of mild and the robes return with Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> and it's a great pleasure today to be able to speak about my good friend from Chorley. But Lindsay, I have several friends from Chorley, oh dear. Including, <laughs> <laughs> including my office manager, Stephen, who often regales my Lancaster constituency office with tales of his childhood from Lancashire's second town. <laughs> and one of my favourite anecdotes is of Chorley Zoo, and I didn't know Chorley had a zoo. Apparently it's known as Chog Zoo, which might be a first reference of Chog in Hansard, which is the slang for Chorley. But upon further investigation, uh, this zoo was in fact Pet's Corner in Astley Park. However, to this day, I suspect a young Stephen was actually mistaking the Hoyle Household Menagerie <laughs> as an actual zoo. <laughs> because with cats, dogs, parrots and tortoises, uh, Lindsay Hoyle really does live out that truism that we are a nature, uh, nation of animal lovers. <laughs> but if you head three hours south from Lancashire, you'll find yourself here. And arriving in this grand building as a newly elected member is daunting. The weight of pressure that you feel to deliver for your constituents, to use parliamentary procedures that seem so confusing, to bring about the change that you've promised can be immense. And it can be difficult to know where to start. But a good place to start is by electing a good Speaker of the House of Commons. One with experience of eventualities that could not be foreseen. Lindsay recalled in his remarks the COVID restrictions we needed to adapt to at speed during the pandemic. Indeed, he is the Speaker who steered us through that pandemic and steered us through those re-smog congas. He adapted procedures for the times we found ourselves in. But it's also important to know that you have a speaker who champions the voices of us backbenchers, one who ensures that all voices, government and opposition, are heard. Our speaker is fair, impartial and independent. Newly elected members will find a great friend in our speaker, and I know I have. Being from Lancashire myself, I have had the good fortune of knowing Lindsay before I was elected here, and over the years he has been a great source of advice and guidance, some of which I took and some of which I chose to ignore. <laughs> but all I can say is that the advice that I ignored, I regret ignoring and live to tell the consequences. So, Despite being annoyingly right about many things, which is a good Lancashire trait, by the way, um, he will ensure that his door is open to all members at times of need. And I can vouch that he does a good brew. It's Yorkshire tea, though. But if you prefer something from the right side of the Pennines, from the Red Rose County, it's the only place on this estate I've managed to get a hot Vimto outside of my own office. 
However, Lindsay, we all have our character flaws, and regrettably, Lindsay does not support Lancashire's finest football team, Barrow. <laughs> Instead, donning the collars of Bolton Wanderers. But Yay. note, well, we have a Bolton Wanderers fan. Uh, but note that is a team which has both blue and red on its crest, and I think that exemplifies Mr. Speaker's even-handedness. Uh. And as a proud champion of Lancashire's rugby league tradition, when outside of Westminster, his favourite place is cheering on Warrington Wolves or, in the summer months, Lancashire County cricket. And like all good sports people, Lindsay knows fair play and hard work. And for all those reasons, and so many more, I am proud and honoured to propose that Sir Lindsay Hoyle takes the chair today. The question is that Sir Lindsay Hall do take the chair of this House as Speaker. As many as are of that opinion say aye. Aye! As many as of that opinion say no, to the contrary, I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it! Before I take the chair of Speaker-elect, I wish to thank the House for the honour that is again bestowed upon me. I am aware that it is the greatest honour it can give any of its members. I propose to do all within my power to preserve and cherish its best traditions. Yeah. 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 Right. Can I just also say thank you to both of you, Kat and David. Thank you. Before I call the Prime Minister, could I just say that we have a busy day ahead of us with further ceremony in the House of Lords and the most returning honourable members to be sworn in. I therefore encourage speeches from Prime Ministers, leaders of the Opposition and other leaders that I would discourage <laughs> that I would hope they can be quite brief today. <laughs> and I do hope that members will respect that it is only leaders, and I'm sorry for other members that may wish to speak. But I've got to say a big thank you to the staff of this House yeah. for the way that they've ensured all new members, the way that they've been brought in and shown the way around. I hope the bodies and everybody involved has made a real difference. I've got to say, it is light years from 97 when I first came in, and may we continue with that.